G'day folks, so I'd like to throw this question out there for you guys. Actually, let's make it two questions. So my first question is, how many sketchbooks do you guys have that are unfinished at any one given time? And the second question is, do you guys have one sketchbook for pencils and another for watercolours? Or do you just have one mixed media sketchbook that covers them all? So if you like, tickle the keys on your keyboard and let me know in the comments. Currently I have three sketchbooks at the moment and I want to reduce that down to two sketchbooks. By my way of thinking, I think it's probably practical to have a watercolour journal which I can do my watercolours and gouache in and then just have a journal that I can use pencil and inks in. This sketchbook that I'm using right now is a 110 GSM paperweight. Uh, it's okay for um, pencil work but if I wanted to do inks or a light wash it would certainly ruin the other side of the paper and that's something I don't really like to do and plus it'll buckle it as well. This will be the last time I think I'll have the 110 GSM paperweight sketchbooks. I think I'll go for the 150 which is the sketchbook that I've recently bought to do my inks and pencil work in. I have a link to that video right here. I think the main reason why I asked how many sketchbooks is too many is because I think I have a feeling of unfinished projects. Like a lot of us tend to start all these different projects but never actually get to finish them and they just sort of sit on the shelf collecting dust and we sort of think to ourselves, oh, I'll get around to that one of these days. But the reality is that we probably never get there. So for me personally, I think just having two sketchbooks is probably more achievable to get uh, them finished in a certain time and then I can move on and have that feeling of accomplishment. So I guess I should talk about this sketch for a little bit and I just want to give you a bit of an idea of what was going through my mind at the time. So I was surfing the internet, as you do, and I came across this company called Tweeterhead, which makes figure sculptures from various franchises. And He-Man Masters of the Universe was one of them that they had done recently. And I was looking up some of the favorite characters from that TV show. I was also looking through various children's fairy tales in the public domain, just looking for a bit of inspiration. And I came across this image of the Snow Queen. And I sort of merged those two ideas of He-Man and the Snow Queen together to come up with this sort of uh, character that you see that I'm drawing now. So I went through my reference photos and found an interesting pose that I thought that would sort of encapture the mood of the uh, concept that I was looking for. And in the photo the woman was wearing a tiara or a diadem and the idea of ghostly flames coming from points from it seemed like an interesting concept. So that's why you see her crown with various wisps of flame. There was a point where I wasn't too sure what to do with her hands so I just did these ellipses and sort of made them out to be some sort of spell perhaps. Um, I wasn't too sure where to go with that further on and I came to a point where I left it as is and I didn't really want to overwork it and spoil it. I might come back to this character in a future sketch and see where I can take it further. Well folks, you've made it this far, so that must mean you sort of like this video, so please hit the like button, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a great day, and enjoy being creative. And if you feel like supporting Australia, I recommend that you scoff down a Lamington or two, and wash it down with a Bundaberg brewed drink. I recommend sarsaparilla. Delicious.